Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today, I'm just outside my door, a few hundred yards away from my house, and it's really cold here in Floyd County, Virginia. This is deciduous forest biome. It's a temperate forest. We live in a temperate climate. So we have hot summers, and we can have some very cold winters. It doesn't snow like this uh, all winter long. We don't have snow on the ground all winter. But we have periods of time where the temperature can really drop, we get snowfall, and it hangs around for several weeks. And what better time than today to speculate on and talk about how organisms survive winter and how they survive freezing temperatures. So let's take a look at a few things today. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's to make this invasive. It's like top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. We talk about how organisms adapt to survive the winter. One of the first things we have to talk about is these trees right here. And these are deciduous trees. Deciduous trees are trees that lose their leaves in the wintertime. Why do they do that? Well, one of the biggest reasons is if they keep their leaves with all that surface area and all those leaves, they'll lose water by evaporation and through the wind. And many plants here die in the wintertime, not from the cold itself, but from desiccation or drying out. That cold, dry wind in the wintertime, combined with sunshine, will dry out a plant. Why does it dry out? Because the ground's frozen, and it can't get any water from the ground. So in the wintertime, plants have to find a way to not dry out because they can't take water in. These rhododendron behind me, they are not deciduous. They are evergreen. They keep their leaves to the winter, but these leaves have been rolled up and they folded them shut and hang them down straight to reduce the amount of surface area and so they won't lose as much water. Another reason deciduous trees will drop those leaves is because if they don't, the snow will pile up on them. The weight of that snow will bring down the tree branches and break them. So they lose their leaves to prevent the snow from weighing them down and breaking their branches and stems and to avoid drying out to reduce desiccation during the winter. Another winter strategy by trees is demonstrated by this white pine tree here. Instead of having leaves, it has needles. And needles have a very low surface area, so are at much less risk of drying out. Their strategy is not to have giant leaves with giant surface area, but have leaves on year round so they can do photosynthesis for a longer period of time during the year. And these Green needles can do photosynthesis when the temperature goes up above freezing. They also have a Christmas tree shape or a V-shape that sheds the snow down on both sides. So they always come up to a point and they're narrowest at the top and widest at the bottom. So they can shed snow off and not get damaged by the weight. So I'm now down here on the lower part of my property where I have a pond and a one-room log cabin that I built with trees from this property. In the summertime, there would be dragonflies flying around here. There would be damselflies, mayflies, caddisflies, mosquitoes, black flies, so many different kinds of flying insects. Where are all those flying insects? Well, those organisms that I just named are organisms that overwinter by staying underwater as aquatic larvae. 
all of those organisms that I just named have terrestrial adult stages that emerge and fly around in the summer. And then they'll lay eggs in the water. The adults will pass away and the eggs hatch and the larvae are living in this pond underneath the water right now doing the things that aquatic insect larvae will do. When the temperatures are low, probably at a slower rate, but they're alive and functioning and eating. I've lived here for 10 years and I've never seen this stream freeze over. And it may be due to the movement of the water and it, as well as its spring-fed nature, but it never freezes. And here, while there's no insects flying around or active in the winter above ground in the terrestrial state, this stream will be full of stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies living among the rocks, eating decaying matter, and also feeding on each other as predators. And they survive and grow all winter long. And later this winter, I'm going to do an episode well, I'll come in here with some boots and a net, and we'll do some collecting, and I'll show you what organisms are actually living here. And many, many of these aquatic insects are still very active, even though the above ground, everything is frozen. So, what about mice? Where do mice go in the winter? Well, mice are true hibernators. Their body temperature can drop to nearly freezing and virtually a heartbeat that might be once a minute tops and the respiration rate goes down. And they'll make a little nest with fluffed bark and grasses and debris and make a home to hibernate in in a wood pile like this. And people that use wood like this to burn in the winter time will sometimes unearth a mouse in there and it will appear dead. And if you touch them, it'll appear cold. But if you bring him inside, he'll warm up and take off running. So mice are true hibernators. And you can see by my dog's reaction, there's probably some hibernating mice in there. And I hate to disturb them. So I'll just try to keep using the wood from the top down. And maybe I won't disturb their winter home. Here in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, we have black bears. And some of them can be up to four to 600 pounds and they're pretty overall for a bear they're pretty docile anytime i've ever seen one in my life they usually take off running so where do the bears go in the winter it's a bit of a misconception that bears hibernate in the winter they're not true hibernators like the mouse their body temperature doesn't drop precipitously in fact their body temperature may only drop four or five degrees and their heart rate will slow down. And they're pretty much going into a long, long, deep sleep. And they'll awake occasionally from this deep sleep and get up and try to go find something to eat and then come back again. Here in Virginia, we don't have snow like this all year round. And so this is probably a time with a temperature near uh, 12 degrees Fahrenheit right now. This is probably a time a bear might say, hey, you know what? This is a good time to sleep. And here at my house, nature at your door, I'm about 100 yards from the door of my house. We've seen black bears and we've seen black bears on uh, game cameras that I put out to catch their movement. One of the things I love to do most when it snows is I get to go out and see what animals have been active. And right here, down by this tree, I can see some tracks and some tracks here and then something dug right here. But the tracks don't go anywhere. So I know for sure these are the tracks of a gray squirrel. And the gray squirrel came down this tree, jumped into the snow, did a little digging. Gray squirrels are known to cache acorns from oak trees and bury them in the ground in their vicinity and they'll go back out and dig them and that's what looks like happened right here and you can see their tracks going right up again to the tree and that was a gray squirrel another mammal that lives here in the winter and is active all winter is the white-tailed deer and i'm tracking a white-tailed deer right now Many of these tracks have been blown over with some wind, so they're not terribly distinct. But I can follow this deer 
and see where he went and I can also see where he stopped and what he ate. Here's some so, deer tracks that come down through the snow here. As he walked, he dragged his feet and he came from a field that's over on the other side. White-tailed deer are primarily nocturnal. During the nighttime, they usually go to fields to feed on herbs and grasses. And then they come back here in the forest in the early morning to bed down up in the trees and hide and sleep during the day. I followed some deer tracks to this point here. And can you see the jumble of tracks right here? So you can see that these deer stayed right here and moved their feet around. What they were, what were they doing? Well, you can see that they've been eating the leaves of this rhododendron. And I know that as well because you can see the snow up here, but the snow has been shaken off by their activity. And you can clearly see where they have bitten off pieces of these leaves in an effort to get some nutrition. Here's some more tracks that come up and end right at this tree. So that makes me think this it was a squirrel that made these. See here, the tracks don't go very deep in the snow. And there's a line behind, almost like it dragged a small tail. So I'm wondering if this might be a mouse that has run through here. As I walk through here, I can't help Again, think about all the different insect strategies there are to overwinter. One of the strategies we talked about in my video was on woolly bears and how the woody, woolly bear caterpillar looks for a place uh, to overwinter. And they survive the winter as a larva and are able to resist many cycles of freezing and thawing. We talked about praying mantises. They overwinter by producing an egg case that uh, survives the winter and when temperatures and sunlight warm it in the spring they'll hatch out again we talked about monarch butterflies survive the winter as adults by flying south and that's one of the most extreme adaptations for insects to survive the winter so most insects have a different strategy either surviving through the winter as an egg a larva a pupa or an adult and it depends on the species fascinating stories thanks for watching my winter holiday presentation of nature at your door on this cold it's probably about 12 degrees and my hands freezing holding this phone 12 degrees fahrenheit which is well below zero centigrade and it's going to drop into the single digits tonight is going to be really really cold and every once in a while i get another snowfall and i have snow flurries blowing over me winter strategies of survival it's a fascinating story how different organisms have different strategies to survive in the winter it's a great thing to look up if you're interested research more about this we'll see you next week thanks for watching nature at your door if you like what i do please subscribe share and this can open up learning to more and more people in our community people that are interested in nature and interested in protecting nature thanks for watching today